All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon are down below if you want to support me, only do so if you actually can. Apologize if my audio messes up at any point. My mic is starting to fail me after eight years of service. So since the invasion last year, not just on my channel, but obviously all over, there's been a lot of talk about Russia and Ukraine and the war and stuff. Typically things tend to be about the invasion and combat and stuff itself, obviously. Over here, I was gonna go over a different theater that revolving around the Russian oil industry and what's going to happen to it, what the fallout of all of this is going to be. So very quickly after the invasion started, all of the outside oil industries, larger Western oil industries, pulled out of Russia, took all of their help and expertise with them, and a fair deal of their stuff as well. And around that time, back in early spring or middle of spring last year, in a number of videos, viewers may recall, I said then that it would take about a year or maybe a bit more before a downturn in Russia's oil output would culminate from that, not including the reduced production that they've already had over the last year, over 2022. That stuff wasn't because of field degradation or anything. That was because of customer absence. It resulted in them having to dial their production down from being up close to 11 at the time to now being down around 10 or a bit under it. The latest numbers as of the most recent month were around 9.7 or 9.6. But back then in spring of last year, I said it would take about a year or so for the beginning of a degradation downturn to start manifesting itself, which Russia I suspected, like Saudi Arabia does, with trying to hide the fact that their oil production ceiling, their maximum threshold, is way lower than Saudi Arabia actually claims it to be, which is why when they push for maximum production increases, they will abruptly call for a halt in the OPEC increases whenever they themselves begin crossing just over 11 million barrels per day because they don't want to expose the fact that their production threshold or maximum ceiling is less than 12 now, while they still try to insist that it's actually 15. We can similarly expect that Russia would try to conceal at least the start of their production downturn and probably carry on trying to conceal it for however long they can. And lo and behold, just recently, a few weeks back, Russia announced that they are voluntarily going to cut back their production by half a million barrels per day on top of the million or more that they've already reduced it by over the last year because of customer absence. And their stated reason for this additional sudden 500,000 barrel per day drop is an act of revenge, apparently, to get back at the West. Even though the West aren't the ones buying their oil anymore, it's now, as they bragged about, China and India. They're just hurting their own friends by doing this. But, uh, you know, whatever, that's the line they want to sell, I guess. So translation, they're trying to conceal the start of the downturn. They obviously, as they said, preemptively shutting down about half a million barrels more of oil production. And 500,000 barrels per day is probably close to the amount it would downturn by. Maybe more, maybe less, it would depend. And so they're likely shutting down the wells and fields that would otherwise start giving out first, a lot of which they don't have the ability to do anything for anymore. Because, here's where we go back in history, so much of their current or formerly current oil production were the result of the entrance of Western oil industries. It was the entry and rapid assistance of Western oil industries that recovered Russia's oil production post-USSR collapse. Since, as you can see on the historical graphs, when the USSR fell apart and the economy imploded internally and everything systems and functionality-wise was breaking down, and also a lot of science and engineering educated Russians, particularly a lot from the oil industry, now that the borders were open in the 90s, left Russia. That all culminated in a massive oil production collapse. In particular, it was specifically the difficult permafrost and Siberian Arctic stuff that dropped, which at the time left them with about 6 million barrels per day of regular stuff. Nowadays, because of obviously ongoing field depletion from those fields that comprised that 6 million barrels per day, by now, that number that would be left in the absence of the more difficult stuff is probably down more between 4 and 5 million barrels per day. And then all of the outside oil majors 
entered in the mid to late 90s, around 96, I believe, was the start of it. So right around there, over the course of those few years, is when they first started coming in. And then, as you can see, it did not really take long to fix it up and get stuff going, which is why you'll see I differ from people like Peter Zion, who a lot of my commenters usually quote to me about stuff, as he and others are usually a lot more uh, dramatic and claim that after this coming collapse, Russia's oil production is going to be offline for decades and decades, which is not the case. The moment the primary oil majors that were working there come back in, it would take a few years, like not even a whole one decade. It would take like maybe half a decade, as you, as you can see, as that's what it priorly took. However, it is going to be a little while before that time comes. So in the absence of those oil majors who were responsible for recovering and propping all of that up, the Russian oil industry was left lacking the help and expertise of those oil majors that was keeping everything propped up and also only having so many parts and equipment and stuff that was left behind as they're not getting provided with or sold anymore. They would only be able to post for so long. And shutting production down as sales dropped over the course of last year also did help because Obviously, at least assuming that they were doing things intelligently, then they would be shutting down the wells and fields that they would lose first. So now we've hit a year from the middle of last spring, and lo and behold, the downturn has most likely begun, and also lo and behold, they are trying to conceal it. The 1 million barrels per day or more that they shut down over the course of last year because of customer absence would actually have already kind of been enough to conceal things for most of this year, probably. But the extra 500,000 barrel per day shutdown is definitely enough to cap it off and keep everything hidden under. And given the rates we saw last time during their last massive oil production collapse, that total would probably carry them through concealment-wise until close to the end of next year. And if they're still around the roughly 9 million barrels per day of production that they are now lowering themselves down to, then at that point, or around the second half of next year, if they're still at 9 million barrels per day then, they will have to either just admit to the downturn and let it play out, or come up with another reason for another abrupt massive production cut, as the one-for-one -one matches about the rate of the collapse that we saw the last time back in the 90s, where the first year as it curved over once the collapse started was about half a million or so. However, then the next one, once it got going, the drop was pretty steep at about a million barrels per day of production loss each year until all of the Arctic and permafrost stuff, all of the difficult stuff was basically gone and they were left with that bottom of 6 million barrels per day, which, as I said, has further declined by now in the background. So that number in the background would now probably be more around 5 in a better case scenario, and down as low as 4 million barrels per day in a worst case scenario. And in terms of will they actually drop that low? Well, it'll depend. The moment the outside oil industries re-enter, they could get everything fixed and restarted within just a couple of years, would then obviously be in addition to on top of however many years it is between now and when they re-enter. Now, as for my thoughts on when that all happens, that gets into you know, how things are likely going to go, and then the internal fallout within Russia from that, which are very contentious. But if you ever come around to any of my streams, which I do once or twice a week, then you'll usually hear thoughts and stuff about that. All in all, though, I generally will say things will likely settle out within Russia towards the end of the 2020s, like the very end, you know, around like 2029, 2030-ish. But anyways, that's it for this one. So thank you, everybody, for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. Or obviously, go watch any of my other videos. I have way too many. Show up to any of the streams. If you want to primarily watch or see happy stuff, you can go to my Catch channel and subscribe to her. But no matter what happens to me anyways, may God bless and protect all of you. And I will see you all around next time.